All right, good afternoon. My name is Theo Moody, and I will be your MC for this afternoon. And I am so happy that you all came out this evening to celebrate our Juneteenth celebration here at College of the Mainland. As a member of the Multicultural Committee, and specific the 2017 Juneteenth Celebration Committee, I am ecstatic about the program that we have put together for you, put a lot of hard work and sweat into this program, and uh, we hope that you enjoy uh, this afternoon's uh, presentations. And so to get us started, obviously we're going to bring um, uh, the president, Dr. Nichols, to bring greetings to you all. If you would, please help me receive our president, Dr. Warren Nichols. Thank you, Theo. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep this real, real brief because there's so many great things we need to do today and we want to hear. Uh, but again, representing College of the Mainland, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm probably one of the shortest timers here, only came in uh, February, but I am really looking forward to hearing what Tilly and others have to say about the history of College of the Mainland. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's just get this uh, show started. Uh, welcome again. Glad to have you here. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Nichols. First up, we have one of our students, Genevia Wells, from our Upward Bound program. She will be presenting the history of the uh, Juneteenth celebration here at Con. Genevia. The first celebration of Juneteenth at College of the Mainland, 2002 through June 2017. When President Hayes was hired in 2001, he observed that Juneteenth was not being celebrated at College of the Mainland. He met with the multicultural team and asked them to include. Thank you. <laughs> to include Juneteenth as one of the celebrated events on the campus. The first celebration of Juneteenth at College of the Mainland was held in June 2002. President Hayes presented the greetings to a capacity crowd in College of the Mainland Student Center. Alex Pratt, a professor in Social and Behavior Science Department, spoke on the theme, The History of Juneteenth. Today, on June 15, marks the 15th year that we have celebrated Juneteenth as the College of the Mainland. This, this celebration is also special because this is the this is also the celebrated, the, this year we also celebrated the 15th anniversary of College of the Mainland. Excerpt from President Hayes' greeting. We are so pleased to see all of, the, all of you at the first Juneteenth celebration at College of the Mainland. I appreciate all of you. One of my concerns talking to many people was that there wasn't an understanding of what this thing Juneteenth was. I kept hearing that, so this is an opportunity to learn and become better informed about a very important day, particularly since it started in Galveston County. That, that makes it even more important that we celebrate and enjoy each other's company as we celebrate. It is, the, it, it is my pleasure at this time to introduce our speaker who has stepped forward and volunteered to give us this information so we all better so we are better citizens and become a community members. So join me in welcoming Alex Pratt, a professor in history and well qualified to give us, give us this speech. Thank you, thank all of you. Thank you, Genevia. Next we have from Hitchcock Primary School, uh, student Jasmine Wyatt will be coming up and she will be presenting a poetic expression. Please welcome. Black child, do you know who you are, who you really are? Do you know you can be what you want to be? 
if you try to be what you can be. Hey, black child, do you know where you're going? Where you're really going? Do you, do you know you can learn what you want to learn? If you try to learn what you can learn? Hey, black child, do you know you are strong? I mean really strong. Do you know you can do what you want to do? If you try to do what you can do. Hey, black child, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do. And tomorrow, your nation will be what you want it to be. I believe that deserves a standing O. Outstanding, outstanding. Our future is bright. Our future is bright. If you, if you don't know, you just got a taste of it. Outstanding job. One more round of applause for Jasmine. That was beautiful. Next up, uh, Teresa Jones uh, was scheduled to do this particular introduction, but unfortunately she had a death in the family. But uh, Carl Anderson has stepped up, our uh, chair of Allied Health uh, and Public Service Careers, to step in our place, and we are so grateful. So if you would please help me welcome Ms. Carla Anderson. Good afternoon, everyone. Our first vocalist this afternoon is no stranger to the Com campus. This time last year, she just graduated from Clear Springs High School and finished 30 hours of dual credit here at College of the Mainland. Yeah. A native of League City with roots stemming from Galveston, Texas and New Orleans, Louisiana, Leah Christian Moody is the oldest daughter of Thea, Theo and Talina and Big Sister Moody and Big Sister to Nicholas and Jaden Moody. Since the age of five, Leah has always had a song in her heart and could be found frequently singing about anything, anywhere. As members of Windsor Village United Methodist Church, her parents recognized her spiritual gift and has since fed her passion throughout elementary, middle, and high school careers. Since middle school and throughout her high school career, Leah has appeared in numerous theater plays. During her junior year of high school, Leah earned the honor of All-State Musician and also earned one of the seven coveted seats in the Houston Grand Opera Senior Studio. That enriched experience prepared her for her next level of education as a classical vocal performance student in Louisiana State University's Dr. Burton School of Music. Last February, Leah was one of three students and the only freshman chosen by the LSU School of Music to represent the university at the Promising Artists of the 21st Century program in Limon, Costa Rica. There she performed for the U.S. Ambassador of Costa Rica, the mayor and citizens of Limon. Leah aspires to become an opera singer, as well as performances on Broadway. She is delighted to represent Galveston County in every opportunity she is afforded to lift her voice, also as the 2017 Miss Juneteenth pageant winner. She will be performing Witness by Hall Johnson, accompanied on piano with comms music student Ryan Sweeney, and may I say from the bottom of my heart, Leah, you will be famous one day. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Leah Moody, and I will be singing Witness by Hall Johnson. This was a Negro spiritual that slaves used to sing when they were working in the fields to give themselves hope of a better future. Thank you. Cease to 
Thank you, Leah and Ryan. Just have to give you this footnote. Ryan and Leah worked on this piece twice together. Wow. Ryan just got this piece last week, so we thank you, Ryan. Outstanding job. This is a testament to, it's the testament to the instruction that we have here at the music and the talent that we have here at College of the Mainland. So please note what you have right here in your community, a jewel. A jewel. Thank you all again. One more round of applause for both of them. Our next poetic expression uh, comes from Geraldine Sams. She is the former mayor of Lamarck. Please help me welcome Ms. Geraldine Sams. Good afternoon. I am so honored to be here on today, and I uh, want to thank uh, Ms. Henson for inviting me. Uh, I am a product of College of the Mainland, and uh, so I was excited about that. Not only am I excited about being a product of, of College of the Mainland, but this year I will be graduating with my doctor's degree, and again, with a, a level foundation from College of the Mainland. I want to thank you all for that. The title of the poem that I'm going to share with you on today is Celebrating Juneteenth. This poem was written by Sherry Jones on June the 21st, 2013. The hopes and dreams of a people were carried on the backs of slaves. The stripes that covered them told the story 
of their pain. Aching hands worked tireless hours, then made delicious meals from scraps. Swollen feet walked miles to gather wood. They jumped the broom at their weddings, voices silenced by intimidation and fear, sang praise songs on Sunday morn, eyes that witnessed gruesome cruelty, saw a bright future in their children's eyes. Skin covered in spit and dirt weathered many storms and survived. Ears that heard ugly names and put downs. Also heard the sweet sound of freedom in June 1865. Two years late, but still a blessing. On Juneteenth, we celebrate their lives, struggles, and that declaration of freedom. We have gatherings with good food and reflect on the past, but we must also look towards our future. What new goals are we setting? What new goals are we going to set? What new heights are we going to reach? Do our lives reflect the future they saw so long ago? Are we living with dignity and respect, or was there suffering in vain? We must answer these questions with our hearts and our minds because the best way to honor the past is to plan for the future, not only on Juneteenth, but and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Ms. Sams. To introduce our speaker. This afternoon we have Miss Beverly Mitchell, who's a Com alum. Actually, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not Beverly Mitchell, but I'm standing in for Beverly. All right, come on up. Thank okay. you. Good evening again. Beverly had an emergency and asked me if I would stand in for her, so um, I'm going to do that too. Uh, I love Miss Tilly Henson, and I remember at College of the Mainland worrying her to death in the, in the library, you know. That's, that was her baby. So uh, I, I think it's an honor for me to read your uh, bio on today. Tilly Henson is the wife of Reverend David D. Henson, Jr. She and her husband are proud of their blended family of children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. If any of her children, grandchildren, her family are here, will you all please stand, please? Will you all give, her, give them a hand? Tilly retired from College of the Mainland in August 2011 after 42 years of service where she was employed as the Library Supervisor of Circulation Services. Uh, yes. However, as duty called, she was asked to return as primary architect, archivist, and has been committed since retirement to preserving College of the Mainland's history. During her extensive stay at College of the Mainland, she was awarded Employee of the Month in 1998 and 2004, and was one of the five 2016 Distinguished Alumni. She has served on the President's Leadership Committee, President's Advisory Council, Chairwoman for the Multicultural Team for some 10 years, and a member of the College of the Mainland Alumni Association. Tilly states that one of her most unforgettable honors was when College of the Mainland Theater Director H. Russ Brown wrote an original award-winning comedy for the 50th year anniversary title, College of the Mainland Wasn't Built in a Day, highlighting Miss Tilly. Tilly Phillips Henson, a charter student, and Combs First President, Herbert Stallworth, headlined it, uh, the cast. Ms. Henson was an active participant for over 54 years at Barbers Chapel Baptist Church, and all the Barbers people wave your hand in the house. 
and most recently at Anointed Praise Missionary Baptist Church, where our son, Reverend Latarian Green, serves as pastor. Anointed Praise, wave your hands and eyes. Okay. She is a life member of the NAACP and has amassed community services awards too numerous to mention. But to name a few, she received the College of the Mainland Hero Award, the Booker T. Washington Unsung Hero Award, the United Task Force Unsung Hero, City of Texas City Unsung Hero, and Greater Barbers Chapel Outstanding Service Award. As a true community servant, Tilly stopped, still stepped out on faith and helped organize and benefit relief drives for disaster victims after Hurricane Katrina and Ike. Those in Orange and Newton counties, Houston, Texas, and Haiti, and today she continues to serve the greater Texas City, Lamarck area as an advocate for children as she serves on the Galveston County Children Services Board. She's a busy lady. <laughs> As is to observe from what I've uh, shared with you, Tilly has devoted her life to community service for Christ and by serving others. It is my pleasure to present to you one, one who I am so proud to call a good friend, Ms. Tilly M. Henson. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Well, afternoon anyway. <laughs> it is indeed a pleasure, as well as an honor to be here in recognition of our president, Dr. Nicholas, Vice President, Glenn Clinton, our new uh, Human Resources Director. Tell me again your name, he's real new. <laughs> He's really new. Clint McGee. And also to uh, our board member, Mrs. Matthews, we are so happy to see you here. You made my day when you walked through that door. When I decided to speak for the 50th anniversary, uh, I was thinking, there's no way in the world that I can talk for a few minutes about what has happened at College of the Maine for 50 years. You wouldn't even want to hear it. You would probably go on and start serving yourself outside. But um, College of the Maine has been very, very special to me. Uh, my pastor told me <laughs> that he said, uh, I know your love is your love, the love of your life is at Barbara's Chapel and College of the Mainland. He said, Those two things I know you love because you have so much passion for those two things. And I said, Well, don't leave out my family. <laughs> I love my family. But uh, I would just speak for a few minutes about uh, College of the Mainland history. And first, I would like to again reiterate uh, Dr. Homer Butch Hayes, who thought so much about Juneteenth and what it means to not only the black community, but to all people because all of us <laughs> celebrate freedom. All of us celebrate education. So he wanted to make sure that College of the Mainland did not overlook celebrating Juneteenth. And we did not begin to do that until he actually came, uh, became president of College of the Mainland. He uh, would tell me how he was the grand marshal many times in the Juneteenth celebration. So he has a special passion for Juneteenth and MLK Day, in which we did not celebrate that on campus until he came. 
So we appreciate the legacy that he has left behind and will continue to be true to that legacy. I uh, put the slideshow together so that I would not have to uh, go through the entire hit, the early history of College of Mainland. But uh, as I thought about what I was going to say, during this 50th anniversary, Mr. Russ Brown, he doesn't know it, but he uh, helped me to come to, to the conclusion of what I, we, I was gonna talk about today. When we was uh, working for the 50th anniversary, he was on the planning committee and he wanted to do something great for the 50th anniversary. So he began to ask me about the college early history and he became so int intrigued over what this college represent that he, and he told me, so you know what? I would like to write a play about the early history of College of Mainland. I didn't think that I was gonna be one of the cast for the individuals portrayed in it. You know, I got busy gathering up all the information for him. Then he called me and told me that you have such a passion for College of Mainland. I'm gonna make you one of the cast characters in this play. And so, uh, it was a comedy, I tell you. <laughs> but he did, and he did it with so much passion. And it was one of the uh, plays, that this particular play was very high in attendance from people from all over who wanted to know a little bit more about College of the Mainland history. We, um, I want to uh, share with you, maybe you know it and maybe you do not know it, that this college has a rich history. This college has been here for the community for 50 years. We want to embrace that because, first of all, it's your college. If you can't get excited about what's yours, no one else can. <laughs> Being a part of College of Mainland for 50 years, I can truly say that this college has the interest of this community at heart. Regardless of what you see in the newspaper, this college is here to serve you, the people of this community. And in my opinion, have, have done a great job. I need an applause for that. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Mr. Russ. He called me and said, can you show me where the, uh, this old facilities uh, is that where College of Manly used to be? And I'm th still thinking in my mind, it was going to look the same way that it did when we left there. When <laughs> I say, okay, rather than you trying to find it, you're new to this area, why don't we just drive down there together? Um, it wasn't the same. It was not the same. The building was not the same. Community, not the same. Nothing about it. Nothing, but there were so many good memories of College of the Mainland. So uh, I shared with him still the enthusiasm, the passion. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember, and it's good to remember where you come from.
It's good to never forget what the bridge that brought you over. We some forget. I used to uh, tell my colleagues all the time, you need to stop complaining so much. You need to thank God. Thank you, Quinn. Thank God that you have this college and this community. Because it, um, a lot of communities, people have to commute for hours just to get an education. And the founding fathers of this college wanted to make sure that this community had the best. When Dr. Starwood uh, was hired at this college as the first president, he had only four months, just four months from the time that he was hired to, uh, to get this college ready to open its doors in September of 1967. It took the entire community rallying together to make that happen. He will tell you, I couldn't do it alone. I had board members who were there with me who, who had just as much of a passion for this college as I did. And they worked diligently to make sure that College of the Mainland hired the best staff, had the best board, had the best students, and they embraced us as if we were their children. Uh, Dr. McNutt, one of the charter uh, instructors for College of the Mainland, called me this morning. And she said, I heard that you were going to speak. And I told him, that's my student. That was one of my students. And we talked for a while, and she said, uh, I am so happy that you're there to, to uh, preserve the history of College of the Mainland. The history should never be forgotten. My family knows I have a passion for history for the family, history for the church, history for everything. <laughs> I have a, a passion because we are to pass that on from generation to generation. If we do not do it, who will do it? I was going to ask my little granddaughter to come up here for a few minutes, just for a second. And I want to, and this is going to tie into the, the history of College of the Mainland. Jalen, would you come here for a second? Come on. We're ready. This is Jayla, my granddaughter, and there is come Malia, my great granddaughter. Wow. Wow. What I wanted them, why I wanted them to come as I speak about the history of the College of the Man. You, John. We actively went into the community with photos of babies because we were a baby college. <laughs> we wanted them to have a great future in this community. So this is our future here and there and there and there, the future of College of Maine. You may say I'm marketing College of Maine. Yes. <laughs> You can go back to your mom. <laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> but I won't, uh, and I said that because, you know, a couple of times within the past eight years or more, we have tried to get a bond passed to have this 
to do great things here at College of Mainland. And we still can do it. We still can't do it. President didn't tell me to say this. No one told me to say this. Tilly told me to say this. <laughs> but I want you to learn to just really understand what this college is to this community. Uh, we, uh, our forefathers, the, the, the board members who uh, were the founding board members for College of the Mainland, what they did, they live and breathe College of the Mainland. The president set the standards so high for College of the Mainland that he wanted to hire the best employees here for this college. We still, just in talking with Dr. Nichols, he still believed in hiring the best so this college can be the best that it can be. And so we're still striving for that. But I wanted to, to uh, just tell you just a little bit about how I came to College of Mainland. I actually was a nursing student at Alvin Junior College. I almost have two years of nursing. My granddaughter's a nurse. She's followed through on it. I didn't. <laughs> but, and, and actually those two years came in handy because when my mother got sick, all those skills that you learn in life, they're not wasted. They come back to you and you can use them for a good cause. So I was able to use all the nursing skills with my mother. But I was in my second year at uh, Alvin Junior College. My sister Katie was driving me to, took me to Alvin to register. I went and I heard about all the good things that College of the Mainland was going to do. It was going to be a, a new college in, in the community and I kept seeing all of this these news releases about College of the Mainland, College of the Mainland, College of the Mainland. I'm getting in the car going to Alvin Junior College. And I thought about it. I went through the entire line to register for my last year of nursing school at Alvin. Got all the way up to paying my tuition. I made a bow face, came, got in the car, drove back to College of the Mainland, and I've been there for 50 years. <laughs> it was a decision that I may actually made for myself because I think my mother wanted to be a nurse and she wanted me to fulfill her dreams, but it wasn't my dream. So we have to let our kids have a dream, but let it be their dream and be there to support them in their dream. So um, I had the forethought to do that and come to College of the Mainland as a student. And then after, I, when I graduated, I was in the first graduate, graduating class of 1969. We had two students who actually graduated in 1968. They came from another college also, but they just needed a semester or two to finish up their credit, and they were actually the first two students, and I do have that on a slide presentation, to graduate from College of the Mainland. But I, I changed my major to business. I went on and changed my major to business. And when I uh, graduated from College of the Mainland, Bob Shin, his wife is here now, Tell him I mentioned his name. Bob Shen was the one that believed enough in me to hire me right after I graduated from College of the Mainland. I did not uh, stop my education there. I continued to take uh, classes to develop new skills, attend seminars, and do the things that I wanted to do because I had two little ones, they're not little anymore, <laughs> and my husband had just passed, and so I had two kids to take care of. So I knew I needed to work, and I wanted to work. Most people that's raised on the farm, they know how to work. I was raised on the farm, and so I know what it means to work 
hard. So I have never forgotten how to work hard, and I am so happy that uh, the skills that I learned on the farm, that I could bring those skills into my everyday life and working hard. But after I started working here at the college, I was uh, started out being just a library clerk. That didn't matter to me. I was going to give that position my 100% as much as if, if I was the president of the college, you know. And then by me continuing to work hard and, and doing the best that I can, giving more than my 100%, I became the supervisor of the library of circulation. And after that, I was asked to be over the multicultural team and take care of all of the cultural activities on campus. And one year we had almost 20 activities going on through, throughout the year, and we kept them going. I guess what I'm trying to say, you can do anything that you want to do, as uh, little Jasmine said. You can be anything that you want to be. You just have to put your mind to it. And I wanted to just deviate a little bit from that, and I'll be through in a few minutes. But um, I'm a little concerned, not about what's happening here at College of the Mainland, but what's happening worldwide with our children. I'm a little concerned about that, and I pray about that all the time. I was listening to the radio this morning and I heard this lady, them saying that they were going to do a GoFundMe for, and they do it all the time with all these mass killings and everything. And I thought about it. I said, I've never heard anyone say, I'm going to do a GoFundMe for education. Why don't we do that? And maybe some of all this other stuff will stop. I have set up a, a memorial scholarship since my mother passed in 2009 to make sure that some child, and they say, do you want, to, want it to be just for African Americans? I say, no. It, I do not want it for just African American children. I want it for whoever needed it. So, So on this 15th celebration of College of, College of Mainland celebrating Juneteenth in the 50th year, uh, that would be my plea to each of you who have uh, been students here at the College of the Mainland. We're really trying hard to start an alumni association, and we would like for you to be a part of it. We have our 50th anniversary books over here. They're just for, these are door prizes. But if you would like to purchase one of those books, they're just $25 and you can just leave your name and number and we will contact you. But we really want to get the alumni started because I believe in giving back. Giving back, if, if your employment has blessed you, wherever you are, if you were, started out here at College of the Mainland. We want you to give back to College of the Mainland so that future generations, the little babies, can benefit. I think that if we learn to be more giving than taking, the world would be a much better place and we all would benefit from it because it's so much joy in just giving to others. It's gonna come back anyway. It's gonna come back to you. So, uh, as I stated earlier, I put a slide present, uh, presentation together so I wouldn't have to go through 50 years of what's happening at College of the Mainland. But it has really been my joy. And I, I do get a little emotional talking about College of the Mainland, talking about Boyle's Chapel, and now even Anani Praise. My son is a member of Anani Praise. If you're not doing anything at 8.30 on a Sunday morning, <laughs> come and visit us at Anani Praise in Hitchcock. 
because we're doing some great things over there. He didn't ask me to do that either. So I'm putting a plug for College of the Mainland, for Nunnery Praise, Barbara's Chapel, for everybody. <laughs> and uh, we also uh, would like to just end with this note that God has put all of us here on this planet for a purpose. Let us live out that purpose. But live out that purpose in making someone else's life better. Be the person that encourages someone else. Be the person that lifts someone else up, not burden them with foolishness. Be the person that grabs a young child's hand and says, I know you can't, don't have the, the, your mom don't have the funds for you to go to college, but I'm going to be there for you. And you'd be surprised the difference that you can make in life and your living will not be in vain. Thank you. We are so blessed here at College of the Mainland to have a great woman like Ms. Tilly Hintz. We, since uh, five years ago when I first uh, began here, working here at College of the Mainland, um, there are a couple of folks that you always will recognize and remember during your time here. And she is one of them. She is a living library, a living library. If you want to know anything about what's going on, not just at Con, but in, in this community, She's a great resource. Um, as a first time member of the uh, Multicultural Committee this year, quite often was, we were so busy with, with you know, student enrollment that I didn't have a time, uh, had the opportunity to work with a lot of different uh, committees. So this one was, was my first. And, and as, as she has always been from the very first time that I've gotten here, has always been a guiding force to uh, a resource of information, of what to do, how things should be done. She's always been that. And I understand as I, I meet other people in the community that she's been that to them also. So we thank you and we love you for that. And we always appreciate you. Before we move into our next, uh, our final person, we, we, Kelly would like to come up and have a little presentation. This will be brief. I've only been at COM for about 16 months. But in my time here, Tilly has been such an inspiration to me and to our community, and to our multicultural um, committee. And we would be remiss if we didn't say a formal thank you. We also have an award for you for serving for this college for 50 years in every capacity we could think of. But unfortunately, the award's not ready. <laughs> so. We have this, and this is just symbolic, and just we just want to thank you. And I want to thank you personally, because you have inspired me. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Now, there's no way in the world that we could have um, Ms. Tilly Henson speak in not wrap up the service with some barber, some barber chapel <laughs> spirit music here. So next we have on our program the Director of Worship and Arts from um, uh, Greater Barber's Chapel uh, Baptist Church, Miss Sandra Malone. If you will come down, I'll, I'll quickly tell you a little bit about uh, Miss Malone. She's a native of Wharton, Texas. She's a mother and grandmother and has been playing the piano since the age of nine, uh, where she started playing at Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Wharton. And she was hired there as a pianist uh, and also at St. Stephen's Baptist Church. She moved to Houston and was the musician for Berean Baptist Church. And she's currently, as I said earlier, the director of worship and arts at the Greater Barbers Chapel Baptist Church, where she serves in this capacity, or has served in this capacity for the last 15 years. Uh, this ministry includes the, the mass youth, uh, the young adult men's choruses, the ushers and nurses aid, praise uh, dance ministry, and she also sings with the Houston Mass Choir. 
and has sung with the Alvin Dread Singers and the Interfaith Community Choir. And she uh, participates annually in the renowned Gospel Workshop of America funded by James Cleveland. If you would, please help me welcome Ms. Sandra Malone, Director of Worship and Arts Ministry from Barbershop. Hello, everyone. <laughs> On the third go around, I would just like to say it's a pleasure being here with you. I'm honored to be here with you. But I would just like to take the time out to say to Leah, you know, when I, I uh, started singing, I always wanted to hit those high notes. I just love to hear good soprano singing. Follow your dream, Leah. Follow your dream. Follow it. He gave me a contralto, and I'm grateful for that, but I always wanted to hit high soprano notes. If you'll bear with me, I'm not going to be up before you long, and thank you to the College of the Mainland for inviting me here with you on today. Sandra Malone, we thank you. 
What a beautiful way to close out our program. We just need to pass the collection plate now, that's all. <laughs> this program would not have been uh, able to, uh, just to be a success today without the, the sweat from a lot of uh, the committee members. And obviously starting with our guest speaker today, Ms. Tilly Ensign, we say thank you. Behind the camera here, my, my fellow brother in sweat and tears, Brother Zach McWilliams. We so appreciate you. Kelly came up early. She may be outside also working, and then also Michelle Cortez. But there's some other people behind the scenes. Kari Drake, we thank you for your help. Paula Anderson stepping in when we need it. Uh, there are so many others, all of our, uh, all of our uh, speakers, I mean, all of our, our presenters and soloists and performers today, we want to thank you all uh, for uh, helping make our program a success this year. 15 years, uh, our 15th Juneteenth celebration here at Com. So we thank you for all of that. We want to acknowledge, first of all, all of our alums. If you are, if you are an alum of College of the Mainland, if you would, please stand. They are in the house, yes. All right. We thank you all for always coming out and supporting your college, your home. And we ask that you for, uh, forever always um, love, support um, College of the Mainland. We will for always be here only with your help and your love. We thank you.